Hi, welcome to a wet and miserable weekend in Chesterfield. Today we're going to turn away from the main pond and the two koi fry grow on vats. What I've noticed over the last couple of weeks is that uh, everything's been getting dusty in the shed. That's the work shed with the uh, koi fry vat in there. And after a couple of days of ignoring this and wondering what it was, I thought I'd been, it was the work I'd done in there. I then rubbed my hands over it and realised that it was coating the walls, the ceiling and every flat surface. And what I actually realised was that it was black mould or a dry, powdery, dusty mould that had settled everywhere due to the humidity in the shed. What I'd done through the start of lockdown and spring is I'd insulated and isolated, insulated and panelled the inside of the shed and most of the days I'd had the doors open so the ventilation was fine. But as uh, the nights have drawn in and the doors been closed more, the moisture's still been present. The, the coy fire bat's been sat between 17 and 20 degrees and uh, the ventilation has not been happening so slowly but surely the mould has taken over and being an asthmatic and having children I freaked out when I found out what it was and started to do the uh, old googling of what it is, how to get rid of it, how to stop it coming back and it involved a, a number of things from painting the walls to uh, cleaning everything down but primarily it was to add ventilation in there so first things first, I needed to take everything out of the shed that I got in there, which included kids' toys that I just put away for winter, the barbecue, my tools, everything that uh, you can see. So what I need to do starts with emptying the shed. A wonderful way to spend my weekend, but I had to make sure that it was done properly and done uh, quickly as possible. So the all-in-one bodysuit was worn and also a breathing uh, filtered face mask was used. I kept spraying all the surfaces down and all the items I brought out with some dilute isopropanol before painting all the walls and ceilings with some Zinsert Permawhite mould resistant paint. It's highly recommended for these situations and also in kitchens, bathrooms, that sort of stuff. Claims you can paint it straight over unplaned on uh, dusty surfaces and it will kill the mould as it goes and it will stop it uh, returning. You can see how powdery it was on the uh, wooden panels, the shelvings, the roof and whatever. A tint of bluey black but it was very dusty. You could even tell when you was using the roller that uh, the dust was dropping off and it was going everywhere. That's why I used the face mask. And you can also see the shadow of the imprint of the items that was also stacked against it. But it was on the work boxes, it was on the shelves, it was on the work surface, it was on the drawer latches, it was on absolutely every single flat surface and it was just getting worse and worse as it goes. As I mentioned I did spray all the surfaces with isopropanol or diluted isopropanol to help uh, kill off anything that was alive and just to soak the uh, panels and so covered best bits I could but unfortunately like everything else it's not quite as easy as it, it, it appears. One of the issues I had was the tray that I was using had a crack in it and it was leaking out the bottom down my hand onto the floor without me even noticing for the first 20 minutes half an hour so there's a nice trail of white paint all over the floor but once I got sorted it, uh, it went on quite quick and uh, spread evenly everywhere and just slightly just a few bits of panels that I ran out of uh, paint for. To be fair it's still a work in progress from the spring because I've never got actually around to finishing the panels. So you can see at the bottom end there's a couple of panels missing and uh, although I managed to paint that end there was a bit around the door that I didn't get to do but I've still got to finish the vent off in the door and uh, move the freezer and the other bits and bobs to get around that bit so it's no real rush because that's where they, they wear a bit of uh, ventilation so there's no not really much mould if any around that area. You can see from this angle what I actually started in the spring. I've got a tongue and groove shed, 25mm kingspan insulation in between and then I overboarded the inside with some 10mm plywood and it covered all the vents that was at the between the roof and the eaves of the shed. It covered all that 
then it, it made it weather tight it made it draft proof and then around the top I've added the conduit for all the electrical connections so there's not really much ventilation apart from the door and I did realize at the time that I would have to put ventilation in but totally forgot the fry vat is heated to about 18 19 degrees so there's the heat from there and the moisture there's no dehumidifier in the shed so it's only natural that eventually we're going to get some mold develop due to the moisture content from the fry vat and the uh, tank that I've got on the workbench. At the far end of the shed there's the uh, first air vent that I fitted. It cost me £11 from uh, Screwfix. So I fitted that at the top end which is open to the elements and you can feel the draw of the fresh air through there. And then about four or five foot from the top corner I put another vent on an open side and again it's causing a perfect uh, draw through that end for the for the ventilation. The shed's 18 foot long so approximately 10 foot further down I put another vent which ideally would bang above the fry ground vat. So I've got plenty of ventilation down that side and the top end and then on the shed door at low level I'm going to add a, uh, a door vent. So in theory it could draw things through through the winter and give it aeration through the summer. The first four foot of the shed didn't have any mould or mildew growing around the wood and that's where I ran out of paint to fill. So I need to get some more Zinsa Permalite mould resistant paint to finish off this and touch up the bits that I missed when I was splashing it on earlier. The beauty of the paint is it's got some biocide additives in it to help fight and kill the mould, hence the seven year guarantee. But it's also water based and odourless so there's no smells to affect the fish or me while I'm working in there. I'm not sure if you notice from the outside but the shed is adjoined by the filter house. Just through the glass panel you can see everything in there. And it's a fairly warm room as well. It sits it's around about 12 to 15 degrees through the winter and a lot warmer through the summer. So by potentially putting a, a vent in there, there's a bit of ambient heat that can be reclaimed to keep the shed equally as warm as what the filter house is. So that was my mad reaction from finding I'd got some black mold, dusty moldy powder in my shed. And of course, being this and the moisture, and the change in uh, weather outside caused a bit of uh, potential mould internally but my gut reaction was to treat and sort out as quickly as possible. So that's the video that's not really koi related or fish pond related but it's, uh, it's a question that starts to pop up on Facebook about the mould and damp in filter houses etc. So I thought I'd just share that with you and uh, if anybody's got any similar issues you can check out what I did to cure the mould. If you enjoyed the video please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and check out some more videos. Now it's getting into winter it's a bit difficult to keep everything koi and pond related but I've got a few videos lined up in the next few weeks that might be of interest to people that vary from sprinkler bars through to air source heat pumps thanks to Barry and uh, a few others on the discord channel and commenting on the Facebook uh, group so I've got the video coming regarding the cost of heat the electro heater and then I think it'll be quickly followed by how to install an air source heat pump. I know there's quite a few out there and they're not all much different but this will be how I do mine. Like I say thanks a lot for watching. Happy ponding.